My name is Dunya Aboud, and I work in the Air Navigation Bureau at ICAO. In this episode, I'll be interviewing a very inspiring woman. I'd like to introduce you to Hélène V. Gagnon, Senior Vice President, Public Affairs, Global Communications, and Corporate Social Responsibility at CAE since 2015. Hélène, you have uh, quite an impressive background. Can you tell us a little bit about your career progress in the aviation industry? Yes, so uh, thank you so much, Dunya. So as uh, as you mentioned, I started in aviation uh, in uh, uh, with Bombardier. I actually started at Bombardier in the rail transportation world, and I um, I moved to aerospace through succession planning. And I think succession planning is very important in organizations. And uh, I was not an expert in aviation because, as, as you mentioned, I worked as a, as a lawyer at the beginning of my career, then moved into the mining industry, then the rail transport industry, and eventually into aerospace at, uh, at Bombardier and then now uh, at uh, CAE. So um, I moved into, uh, into aviation and aerospace really through succession planning. And um, I, I really think that you, when you have the opportunity to uh, have a job, no matter what that job is, you always have the opportunity to shape it. And I think, you know, I've, I've really, I was been able to shape some of uh, the jobs I've, uh, I've had and really make a difference by uh, mobilizing a number of stakeholders. So I guess we'll have a chance to, um, to talk about that during this, uh, this webinar. But um, I've been uh, on executive committee of uh, multinational aerospace companies and, uh, and it's been really fun. So we can't wait to learn more about uh, all of your involvement in different organizations as well, and also about your role at CAE. Uh, so um, what about your role at CAE and the priorities that you're working on? So, of course, because I'm, uh, I'm in charge of uh, public affairs and, and communications, you can imagine that I have a, a lot to do with the culture of the company, the employee engagement, and especially in the last year, it's been quite a challenge to maintain the, uh, the engagement and the culture of the company with so many people working from home. But um, we've been really leveraging one of our values, which is empowerment, to really um, support employees and get their ideas. And we got so many amazing ideas from employees to really help us uh, uh, go through the, the, the crisis and the pandemic and find new ways to, um, to shape the company going forward. But I'm also leading the corporate social responsibility as you, as you mentioned. And in the last year, I've been extremely proud that despite the pandemic, we maintained our commitment and we became the first aerospace company in Canada to be fully carbon neutral on a worldwide uh, basis. And when we announced that uh, last fall, we also said that we uh, want to have at least half of our aircraft fleet uh, that is going to be hybrid or electric in the next five years. And it might sound like a, a little crazy, but because we're a training organization, we have about 250 aircraft, but they're small aircraft. They're the, uh, the aircraft that uh, we leverage to give uh, some cadets their first pilot license. And so when you use an aircraft for training purposes, you're not going anywhere, right? You're going from A to A. <laughs> you're running in circle, basically. And, um, and it's very feasible to have uh, an electric uh, fleet in the next few years. But that's a very bold commitment. And uh, so I'm working on that to work with the industry to develop um, uh, those aircraft. I've been also working a lot on uh, helping the company pivot, really, during COVID-19. So We've done things that are outside of aerospace to really help society. We've designed from scratch a ventilator made in Canada. Uh, we've did so. We've done so so many things. But one of the things that also uh, we did is that we put together a platform called Airside. You can find it on airside.aero, uh, and it's really to create a community for pilots. So many pilots are in furlough right now. We wanted to create a space where they can actually. Um, uh, be together and find some new job opportunities as well. So that's one other thing that uh, we've been uh, working on. And as a company, of course, uh, we're a high tech company. So we've been uh, uh, changing the way we operate by doing a lot more remote training, uh, remote um, uh, certification of some of our flight simulators. So a lot of uh, uh, focus on digital innovation. 
and I'm at the, at, the, at the center of that. And maybe one last thing is that uh, we're now supporting also the new markets like urban air mobility and what we call the eVTOL, the electric uh, vertical takeoff and landing. And there's going to be a lot of training needs for all these new vehicles in our skies. And uh, this is another focus and priority for CAE right now. That all seems uh, really interesting. And I'd really like you to, uh, you know, at some point in our conversation, really, you know, uh, get into more details about uh, all of these uh, different projects and initi initiatives that you're involved in. Uh, but we, before we do, I, I'd like to know a little bit about, you know, your personal, um, um, let's say, uh, advancement in, in the aviation sector. Uh, so during your career, uh, were there any times where you experienced an imbalance, uh, say, between genders, perhaps uh, what I would call domestic imbalances or at the office? every day. I mean, it's all the time. It's a man's world, you know, but um, I came, as I said, from mining and rail transportation. And so if we believe that aerospace and aviation are um, a man's world, um, I can tell you that mining is even worse, you know, so imbalance uh, between uh, genders. Yes, absolutely. I felt it uh, throughout my career, almost every day, but um, I don't see that necessarily as a negative. And it's always a question of how you look at things, right? So uh, have I been the only woman in the room? Yes, with 10 other executives, with a thousand other men, with a hundred other, always and very often. But, you know, I've never stopped to be myself and to be very feminine. I don't mind, you know, dressing in pink uh, when I'm in a, in a group of men. I have, uh, I am who I am. And because I'm different, I think it's been an advantage. So I've turned that into an advantage. But I've, but what I've really been doing is also supporting the openness toward more gender uh, balance and equality throughout my career. And that really starts uh, in the way you look at talent inside the organization. So I mentioned at the outset that the way I actually moved up and uh, moved into aerospace with, was through succession planning. And in a lot of organization, when you start looking at the talent and sometimes when there's not enough women, you know, in, in the executive committee, then the talent that is presented uh, at those reviews is uh, very often all the same gender. And it's not because um, 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 it's done in a way that is meant to exclude women, but it's just because people don't tend to necessarily look at uh, people that um, don't uh, look like them or have different experience or just diversity. And you need to force it a little bit. And at some point to force to say, well, when we do the talent review, you need to look at your um, um, uh, the women talent that we have inside the organization and bring it up and make sure that we give uh, more women visibility, even if they're not as high in the organization. And when we start to dig, you know what, we find we find a lot of talent. So that's how, you know, you actually build the talent pipeline and you bring more women up, uh, up the chain, I would say, in, in big organizations. So I've, I've been really an ally for a lot of women uh, at Bombardier now at CAE, and I've seen the difference. And today I'm, I'm proud to say that um, CAE has made the Bloomberg Gender Equality Index for the third year in a row, uh, just now recently. And so we're part of the top 300 companies worldwide that really ma are making progress in terms of uh, gender equality, being transparent about the all the actions that we're doing. So signing up to these things, you know, reporting, doing, signing up to challenges like the 50-30 challenge um, that the Canadian government has put into place or the certification of women in governance. I mean, when you fill in those questionnaires as, a, as an organization, you realize all the gaps that you have. And it's very helpful because once you know the gaps, you can actually work on them. But, you know, to get to gender diversity, you need allies at the top. It starts with the CEO. It starts with the president. So when your president is not open, it's very hard. But uh, luckily, I've been working with men that have been uh, who have been really allies for, for women. And uh, so although I was at first always the first women on the executive committee, then, you know, within a few years, we were two, now three. And when you get to a number of 
three, you know, three men, women out of 10, for example, makes a huge difference. There's a big pivot between one and two and two and three. And once you're at three, even if you're not a majority, honestly, uh, it's making uh, a huge difference. So we need to keep working on gender equality, gender diversity. There's ways to do that, but don't always feel it's a disadvantage. If you're alone or just a limited number of women, you're different, you're bringing dif different expertise, different point of view, and turn it into your advantage. What you said.